Hello, hello, I'm Rangaroo. And I'm Graham. We're here today with another 1v1 of the War Game Bootcamp Discord Elite Tournament. We are on a fight of mud, and who is getting dirty today, Mr. Graham? So on the left-hand side, we have Greyhound here playing as Eurocore General. And on the right, is not cro don't be deceived, dear viewer. This is actually Razman himself playing as USSR Mechanized. Yes, Rich is well... You know, Mech Gang is predictable gang, but USSR Mechanized is interesting, because USSR Infantry, apart from VDV, is not good. And you don't get VDV. Yeah, it's really, it is pretty interesting to see that he brought that out. Oh, Double Panthers here off the start, doing a lot of damage here from the get-go. You can see the Igla Squad's getting taken out, the BMPPs being forced to unload here. Uh, one of them will drive back this Panther a little bit, but they already did a lot of damage. Indeed, managing to stomp that little tactical outplay. Oh, it's really just more of a reconnaissance push. And because also he's playing Mechanized, and well, also USSR as well, he's a little bit more slower to the start here, and he will not be able to get into Delta first, which usually a map is a fight over the Delta village. Yeah, the Legion 90 are already in there. We should see, though, the angle there, I kind of wish you the line of sight tool. <laughs> uh... It's trying hard to see like where the Legion 90 gets shots um, line of sight with the Eryxes, but yeah, they will get there and beat him for first. We see two A4s engaging T72 um, over 1987s, OBR 1987s. So, a little, little throw down here, Rang, right there in the mm. Delta Town. Yeah, the Mortal Strangler are just going to get absolutely slapped here out in the open, and we're seeing Razman is not going to want any of that heat, and is backing off his T72s, probably trying to utilize the ATGMs here. But not looking great so far for Raz. He's a little bit on the back foot. Yeah, the opening didn't quite do as much damage as I thought initially in the engagement there, but it definitely took out a BMP3. I, I believe it took out one of them. It did some, killed off the Igla teams. It's always annoying. The just conquers him. But here we just see the Ur Greyhound taking a pretty decisive advantage, destroying almost all this infantry here from Razvan. He's trying to push them up, I think, so he can get them in range of those TSA 2Bs. And he does, yeah, one shot hits from T uh, the Leopard 2A4, other one missing, it's another being forced to back up. Yeah, Greyhound but, is really applying the pressure, and this is perfect timing for him. This is risky moving at Leopard 2 4s like this. He doesn't have any ATGMs or, you know, planes to blap you. But it will pay off, as those Bs are going to have to bugger the hell off. Yeah, we see another frontal hit right there. Uh, trading shot, but that T-72B is down to one HP. He just needs one more shot there. Two misses back-to-back. -back. We'll see if Greyhound continues to make the push. We see smoke coming out for both players. Oh, a shot on them when they're only two HP. They do the range right there in the armor. But, okay, see, so we'll be able to smoke up here with the Vasilates. And this Indeed. might stop the rush of the uh, two A4s. We're actually smoking the tour there. Yeah, it's really want to keep that heavy anti-aircraft piece alive. It's quite fun to see the Vassalus have to be in use, because as a smoking tool, it's pretty damn good because of its, like, burst fire capabilities. Yeah, it's really interesting to actually... Um, you don't see it too often in the game, but it is it is really interesting. It has a nice amount of rounds as well. I think it's the range is what most people kind of have an issue with. It's pretty... No, I think it's pretty standard, actually, though. No. Yeah, it's most, pretty standard. I think most people prefer taking the Nona for the <clears throat> better high explosives. Yeah, the only downside with the Nona is that it has the low amount of um the low amount of ammunition. Just don't miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, just, just don't miss. Yeah. Don't miss. Yeah. And it can look expensive for just yeah, it's definitely a, a skill issue, just like tactical outplay. <laughs> skill issue. But I would say um off here is it does look like Greyhound's in the dominant position. Alpha's fully under his control. Also, are most of the approaches to it as well. He can hit that main road coming down there from Razman. Delta is, I would say, you know, it's lightly contested, but he has the appropriate, you know, the better angles, I think, currently into it. Whereas Razman does have Foxtrap, but I think that's, that's really about it. Yeah, it's a pretty, yeah, like you said, good opener here from Greyhound. He can really apply a lot of pressure just right through the center here. Pretty much can completely secure Alpha and Delta. It's in this map are the key points. I mean, Razman has this man to clear out Foxtrot. He could potentially maybe sally forth from the Foxtrot Delta Town, but that's sure he's a bit risky. There's not a whole lot of cover between you and the heavily dense forest. Yeah, I think so as well. And it's just a hard, it can be a hard move there for both. So, I mean, 
But if you're Razvan, I don't know if investing back down south is worth it, just the amount of time and resources it would take, right, to just kind of get yeah. even a foothold in any of those directions. So it kind of makes sense maybe to use Foxtrot as like an anchor point and then press down into Delta, or I guess Charlie, if he could take the forest line there. But it does look like Greyhound is in the superior starting position now, about five, you know, six minutes past the game. Oh, oh PU called out. out. The PU chasing down the F4. He gets a hit there, but oh, oh, oh he, he gets a kill. Get Very clutch kill, yeah. And not a yeah, really of anti air here for Greyhound. No, really nice kill there by the PU. Um, he brings it vetted. Razman does as well. So as you saw right there, both shots, neither mit. both, you know, two missiles out, both missiles hit. It's definitely a rough roll investment for vetted, especially in a one v one where you don't want to be spending a whole lot of money on like air superiority because you're not blowing up ground targets. So you might as well just make up one fighter really bloody good. Yeah, no, for sure. It definitely in the one v one scene, it works a lot there just to maximize the amount of points that you're putting out into the match. Uh, we do see this Panther you know, kind of chilling, took a little pot chest the Moto Stroke as they pushed it there with the Conquerors and M Squad. Igla being brought out, bmp 3s with a T-72B 87 kind of screening as well. Uh, the pace of the game should slow down here um, from that initial engagement there. It looks like more armor is going to be, re yeah, all this armor is going to be allocated back towards the Foxtrot Delta area here for um, Razman. Though this Peace Ryan sees the T-72 right Ooh. there, comes in, Gets a snipe. Really nice pick there for Greyhound. Free kill. Brings in the piece, that's for sure. I do think for Razman, probably trying to push the Northern Foxtrot Charlie area is his best bet. He does have ATGM advantage and a good amount of mid-range tanks, which can... Well, he's going to have a bit of a hard time against uh, Lapidary 5s, but really, like you said before, just trying to push the southern point of the map is... Is worthless. Yeah, I also think from Razman's position, just the deck itself will be kind of hard, I think, to really push in the current area he has. I think if you're grinding it out, you know, in Alpha or that town there in Delta nonstop, it, you know, it can work, but it's going to be hard to push a Eurocore player out of Delta and Charlie. It's not impossible by any means, you know, and Razman's one of the best players in the game, but it's, it's not going to be an easy task for him here. Yeah, because you can't rely on the infantry. You have right. to. It's all about the fire support from the IFVs. And you do get some very good IFVs. But in the end of the day, you need infantry to clear positions. And reserve its spams mixed in with good shock troops is, well, a bit too much for the motto strictly. Yeah, and he's going to need to put a stop to that peace run as well. And just be able to dive in there, get another kill. So there goes a BMP3. This other one's going to come up close here. Actually, needs to be kind of careful... The LRAS can get a shot off here. Oh, but it misses. So, yeah. And good micro there by Razan to turn off the 100 mil and just let the auto cannon do some work. Yeah, once again, another miss by the reservists. I mean, if you're a Greyhound, I think you want to go ahead and try and consolidate that forest line. Losing that will give Razman at least cover to make a push into Charlie. Yep. So that could be really annoying to deal with. But we see here a Panther already coming out. Alpha's going to get put under lock and key here. The Razman buying three BMP3s. This might be for Delta. It's coming off the road now. I thought it was maybe going down south, but that might be for Delta. That's a heavy investment in IFE, so it's nice to yeah. also get some infantry to come along with them as well. In Delta, they can definitely zone out okay -ish, I guess. I mean, the problem is infantry TGMs in Delta are, I say, almost invulnerable, but... Yeah, the, okay, the 100 mil has, like, long range. I forgot about it. It has the same range as uh, Milan. So you can actually counter ATG yeah. of it. Yeah, the BMP3 is really... It is an interesting IFV that you bring to the table. It um, <clears throat> obviously has the Arcan, so it does have the 28 meter range with 21 AP. So it's a very decent missile. It's got the auto cannon. It does have the 100 meter, uh, but that only fires HE. So it's a, uh, it's interesting. It's got five, you know, five frontal armor. It's expensive, but if you can leverage them the right way, I think the BMP3 could be decisive, but... You don't see it brought out too much rank. It's just not uh, It's not super common, I think, in 1v1 play. Yeah, because you're basically taking a vehicle in your infantry slot. And you need your infantry slot to fucking infantry. That's why most SSR plays usually just do VDV spam. But when you're right. playing mechanized <laughs> and you have so many infantry slots, you can afford to take basically a vehicle with some, right. you know, tagged along infantry. One also... 
Yeah, totally. And like with and with other mechanized decks, when you talk about bringing expensive IFDs, your course is a great example with the Martyr 2. It's bringing a Panzergren squad with it, right? So it's not like it's only the IFV you're buying. Yeah, sure, is the Martyr 2 part of the, the equation? Absolutely. But another a big benefit is you are taking typically a Panzergren 90 squad along for the ride. <laughs> so it's not like they're any slouch. And that's where it just kind of comes down to, like you said, you're only buying the BMP, the, that Motostroke squad with the BMP3 for the BMP3. And that can get a little expensive. The one benefit the R will give to the Monster Strikely is the Monster Strikely 90s have a crazy RPG. Yes, absolutely. RPG. That's, that's yep. the one upside, but in an actual infantry fight, it's what you'll buy an infantry for. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, that, well, that KM AK 74 combo is crap. Yeah, maybe the benefit is maybe on Mud Fight, there could be a lot of ATGM action. So if you have BMP3s, you're going to have a lot of Arcans. He will have a longer range. It's just a lot of times it feels like the way smoke is used by the top level players, they're really good at minimizing the amount of damage they take from ATGM platforms. So it's it's definitely not that it can't work or anything like that, but it's just rare, I think, that we see it be so be very effective. And all it takes is one Milan squad in the right spot to kill a BMP3. It just takes one hit. Indeed. It has us a lot of small skirmishing back and forth. We are seeing some spats as the Monta Strankly move through the forest. And we've got pretty good aerial coverage so far from Greyhound. Just got Raphael allowing, you know, giving some coverage to the piece right now. we got the Desu-27 and the 27M also flying about, so... Think maybe yeah, I'm curious to see if this... Yeah, so the Grassman should be favored here because the Raphael against both of these, both, uh, both those have R77s, which is absolutely natural. But the S-27M goes down along with the Raphael, but the PU isn't able to get the kill in the Peace Shrine, and his Peace Shrine is going to fly right over the tour. Oh, no, it's going to fly right in the path of the PU, and PU is going to get the kill. Uh, but the M did go down. Oh! oh! Oh, but a hit was made on that PU there. I don't know, but it lived. Yeah, the F4 got the hit there. Um, interesting that, engagement. I was definitely, I'd say, a benefit to Greyhound, as both of the SU-27M and the PU are uh, single cards. So yes, that's true. That's a lot of Razman to air superiority down in that run engagement, even though he did lose more. They also left some more expensive planes as well. Yeah, no, I think that's a really interesting point. It's uh, w by bringing the single card there. In the, in the SU-27M, it really didn't accomplish anything. You want it to kill those heavy tanks, right? That's the whole purpose, one of the main reasons you bring it. So it's super expensive. Losing the Raphael does suck, along with the Peace Shrine. But in, especially when it comes to activation points with cards, I think you bring up a really good point there, Ring. We've seen the Vassalisk here providing a little bit of smoke coverage for the Monta Strackley so they can get into the town. There's not a whole lot of uh, fire support right now being leveraged on TM, but we've seen the Panther, Leopard, Trey 4, and the Panther Mortar come in. They smell blood in the water. And we've seen a Puss actually emerge with the BMP3s and the T-72s also attacking. Yeah, so Razman has decided that he's going to push into Delta here and try and get back into this town. The problem is there's so much infantry in there, even though it's reservists. Babs can provide fire support. The Leopards are here. We see the Milan F1s actually opening up here to kind of screen back this armor blob. Oh, and actually, yeah, Greyhound smoking off, smoking off them, smoking them off in the first place just to kind of, you know, force them to come closer to him. Was that a cluster bomber? The MiG-29M cluster? Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Really good, uh, really good shot there. Doesn't get the 284, but he gets the RC. Now, there is a Jupiter supply vehicle already back there, so the 284 should get back health pretty quick. And we just see here, these Motostrucky, all 30 of them, they're going to go down right here, eating these 10-man Legion squads. You know, just, it's a, it's a massacre. Please avert your eyes. It's brutal out here for the Soviet infantry. Uh, and he is just going to be buying more Motostrucky. Oh, really side shot. Side shot by the F1 on one of the T-72Bs right there, bringing it down to 3 Ooh. HP. Really nasty. Falschermager forced to dismount, but they are alive. And this armor blob's kind of stuck out here in the open. It's most been dropped everywhere. If these two A4s could get up in action CQC, they could be deadly. Yeah, we do have good coverage here from this armor blob because these ATGMs are getting some very good transport snipes to deter reinforcements. 
But right. they only have a limited amount of fire support on the tower, and as you see, it's completely smoked off, and they're a little bit low on ammo, so they're falling back a bit for the hero to actually load RPO's missiles. Yeah, and he's gonna... So he can kind of... And, like, right here in Rasmus' position, he can contest Delta, but I don't see how he keeps the CV alive for a long period of time. He, he's clearly buying out the Jeep one. It's, you know... He'll get it in there, but this position is kind of almost like in a weird... It's not really in a concave, but it's it's pretty close to it. And it just feels like with good smoke play, you know, Greyhound can really contain this and keep it from advancing too far. You see the PU is back out. I'm not sure what it's doing. It's flying right over Alpha. Whatever it was doing, it's a misclick oh, or, or something. Oh, Kratal getting a shot out, uh, getting a hit as well on the PU. Oh, I'm missing, and he actually needs to back that up. There's oh. a bunch of MI-24s coming in. I'm going to see a little bit heli heli action here as an alpha we got BMPTs going hot, MI-24Ds coming over the ridge line, the Crow Tower's firing its missiles, so temporarily out of ammunition. Oh! BMPT getting the kill on the Tiger Had right there, that's oh. just disgusting there from the bottom. Now these MI-24s have to back up because the Crow Tower did fire, and kind of warns them off there. 40 more Modus Strelke coming out. I mean one benefit I guess of Razman is he can do that all day. He can just throw hordes of poor Soviet riflemen, you know, just drafted and sent to the front with an AK-74. But they're just getting massacred right there by the, just a couple of apps. Yeah, there's no... The fire support is not in a good enough position. MiG-29 coming in. Or oh, F-4 he, intercepting. Yeah, he backed it out. Now, if the F-4 can get the kill here, that'd be massive. No, do, no he doesn't get the kill there, so he does back it out. But these two A-4s... Could I honestly push up now here pretty soon? Oh, but the MI-24D is actually trying to get in here. They do have the, fl uh, what is it, Flata? I forgot how you pronounce it. Yeah, the Flata. It's a craft Flata. ATGM. Yes, it's not good in, um, in War Game Red Dragon whatsoever. We see right there. Honestly, you don't see the MI-24D called out that much. It's really not that common, at least in that form, um, in the game. Yeah, because you just bring it as a uh, transport heli. Because it is a mm -hmm. bit overpriced for transport heli. But I guess it's just some extra, you know, helicopter support, which Razman doesn't have a whole lot of. He's got some VPs, but that's about yeah. it. I mean, USSR mech, not airborne. Uh, helicopter yeah, I mean, play isn't exactly up to snuff. The rockets can be nice, like, with helping with infantry and stuff. But like you said, like, the, the ATGM is Garbo. So... It, that just makes it, uh, I mean, the 35% accuracy is just brutal. It's 55 points, too. It's not like it's cheap. Yeah, you're, so. it's just fire support. Oh, we see the 2A5 here actually pushed up by Greyhound into Delta. Um, he's looking for some action right now. I'm trying to see where he's, there, whereas Vedka squad is really close to him. He's going to probably want to get something else up there to push. But that 2A5 with also two 2A4s on the map. Ooh, this half is going far south here. He's looking for some helicopters, I think. But he's going to run right into this BMPT. And that 30 mil will trash as we've already seen. Yeah, 2 HP already down. <laughs> now the, and the auto cannon from the the hat trying to engage, doing almost no dan none actually, no HP whatsoever. Is BBT is BBT might get the kills out of 2 HP. Oh, but it seems like the stun has actually like elevated it to go faster. It did get out. The stun has caused it to like absolutely flip out. He barely has any control. Honestly, he should have crashed in the mountain right there. If there was any justice in this world, but that uh, Tiger Hap is going to back out here. And we see the Faust Rigger 90 now kind of sent to go hunt. But it just kind of feels like, you know, it's super annoying for, right there. But I'm not sure how much they'll get done. We see SC 24 m and MiG 29M coming out. MiG 29 is obviously going to try and cluster the smoke, I think. No, it's maybe he had it on attack order or something, but it doesn't do anything. You're actually really lucky there's no fighter or AA or a right there ready to rock. Yeah, it's really just that one crow tower. It's been pretty fortunate for Raz that he has not had to run into, you know, a bunch of Roland. You're also up north for seeing a little pussy from Greyhound. Just got some light units and a laboratory one. Oh, AMX-13 in the line here. He could potentially snipe his CV. It's just a UAZ. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of on the move there. Or if he could at least find it, right, force a reload... Forced to relocate. Make 29 M back out now. I think this time he's gonna probably get the correct fire position. Graham probably should have backed that 205 up after the last mishap from great um, from Razman. We see it coming out. So he's backing up now. So we're trying to see if the dodge will make it. 
Um, yeah, no, it should. Yeah, it'll get out about half health. Oh. We've seen the Delta CV is attempting to... Well, I say it's not attempting to get sniped. The Panzer Mortars are attempting to snipe the CV. You don't really choose to get sniped. It's kind the of snipe life don't force. choose you. Yeah. It's an actual yeah, well, he, he might get the kill. Yeah, I mean, it's down low HP. He's really, he's really close. If he keeps shooting a couple more, two, three more salvos. And honestly, he got really close to the CV in Foxtrot with those AMX-13s. Oh. Had to get the emergency hind brigade to stop it. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm like really fixated on if this, <laughs> if these mortars can get the direct hit. They keep. Like, they're so close multiple times. Oh, oh, big big bombing run here by the 2A4s. Bunch of planes now bought out by Razman. Um, these specimens are going to run right into armor and they're going to die. They packed their RPGs at home and sent out the RPOs, which are great against infantry, but I bet he really is as he has some mods directly 19 at Forest right now. Yeah, and also, like, saving the bomber to be able to put it in the VAB or hit where the CV was, what might have been better. Now the VAB actually goes up there, picks up the, the infantry CV, the Metastrophe trying to engage, but they're out of range or out of range now, I believe. And this VAB's going to relocate them. And these two A4s, even though they're damaged, is going to push up and hunt down these Fetsnaz. Uh, and there's Faustro Meager. These MiG-29s are hunting for him. really do like his push here from Razman to Alpha. It's, he's still not oh, in a great in position in this match, but he's managing to slap back a little bit in the southern point. The problem is he's getting more reinforcements down here. He is moving up a B1 and a bunch more high Ds. He really likes his MI-24Ds. I'm surprised yeah. how much he's using him. I think a big problem, though, for Razman is that he's really relied on air power at this point to kind of make some of these pushes happen, and they haven't achieved a lot. Like, the MiG-29M just goes down and never got a single tank kill. Both these Leopard 2A4s are going to get, should get repaired. Um, he has traded out some of the infantry in lighter vehicles in Alpha, which is nice. But it really, he's heavily relying on these planes. And if they go down, especially these any of these SC-24Ms, he's going to be in a rough spot. We're going to see him bomb the town here, kind of like carpet bomb it style. The rolling twos, I think, are out of position. The rolling threes, excuse me. Yeah, they just get a hit on one... Yeah, and there's still plenty of infantry alive. I think he, if Greyhound better positions that AA, he's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and those Roland should shut everything down. Well, the Cortali had made it out of Alpha. I didn't even realize that. Mm -hmm. It's and a shame just... that uh, Bombing Run, he didn't have anything to follow. Oh, BMP3 goes down, but anything to follow up with the infantry push. Right, yeah, he's just dropping bombs there. I mean, these are four Ds will get something done here. They should find the CV here and get a kill. We see the VAB opening up, which can be annoying, but eventually they're going to get the kill there. Oh, they jumped right <laughs> on top of the rolling threes here. That is super annoying. Hap does come in, gets two of them, do go down um, in quick succession, but the rolling three can't target it um, through the forest line there. Then the D... Wow, that's just... You alive, Ray? <laughs> I'm broken. He's I'm broken. Fine. That's okay. So, who needs seeds when you got the hind D? Yeah, it Real seems time. that way. The peace run actually getting a kill on the CV. Wow. Yeah, I mean, as funny as that was, I'm not sure if it. I'm not sure how much it'll do in the long term of the game. Probably not. I mean, it, it, he alleviates. Um, it's a big trade. The Sam. Yeah. At least, so his SU 24s can continue in to just bomb the hell out of the blue four lines. Yeah. But he's still not in a great position in Delta. He hasn't been able to knock out really any of the Lapa 24s or Tree 5s, and he's been losing mm. a lot in the ground game. And he still needs to capture the town in between Delta and Alpha. Yo, he does have an opportunity now because. Everything's buggered off after being, well, I guess, scared off by the Chad Hind D. Yeah, this is his best chance for sure. He's also buying two CVs right now. Wow, that's a that's an expensive buy at the same time. I mean, this is my Swift 4 ds Obviously, super overperformed. RNG Jesus uh, was really with Razman today. These fast meter 90 is going for the long walk there. I mean, I'm not sure what Greyhound's thinking is here. I think he's going to try and get more fast from here. And he does have the Leopards. He needs to repair his stuff. He has still has a lot of heavy pieces, but they need to get back into that action. 
He also needs more AAs where losing the Raphael um, has hurt a lot as the game has gone on here. Yep. I do see uh, the two Yuri Z uh, buyouts here. Probably one for Alpha, run to down to it, or give Razman that plus run. Yo, Foxtrot is slowly crumbling here. Oh, right, and the whole time we weren't even paying attention and Foxtrot completely fell apart. Yeah, it's it's gone. The Leopard Tree runs yeah. in a very dominant position. There's anti-aircraft, yeah. The Milan F2's thrown in. And Razman, he can't really afford to do a heavy investment to counter Foxtrot because he needs to take advantage of the opportunity down south. So he's in a tough spot. As, as much yeah. as that Hein did work. Yeah, actually, um, Greyhound's in a really good spot. Even with that crazy shit with the Heinz, that was insane. You know, part of my language chat. But that, you don't see that every day. That's just, that's something, that's something else. But the Foxtrot push there where we were all distracted. While Razman was distracted, baby, I don't know. Um, this is really big here by Greyhound. It, st it still keeps in the plus one going here. And I mean, uh, 200 points at the 14 minute mark. That's a big leap in a 1v1. Yeah, and massive. with only plus one sectors and the ability to counter cap Delta as well, um, these SF 24s need to get something. Done. They're going for a snipe here in the forest line. We'll see the rolling three if he stops and gets a shot. I mean, he might. No, and it still lives because it's HE. So did the supply truck, too. Yeah. Oh, 1 HP at supply trucks. Absolute champ. Yeah, those SU 24s have definitely been doing a lot of good work here for Raz, but it's just not really enough. He can bomb the blue four positions and keep him suppressed, but he's having a bit of a hard time, like, really following through. We've already seen an Alpha Lapidre 5 getting into position, and that dude is going to be hard to knock out if it was T-72s. Yeah, and also, uh, Ra or Greyhound sees, you saw the CV, the UAZ as it went in there, so the plus one gets back up to it. And while Rasmus' position has gotten a lot better, I mean, he's into Alpha. I didn't think that was going to happen. He's assaulting the town in um, that separates Delta and Alpha. I mean, Greyhound, if he could hold on to just Foxtrot and contest Delta, it's almost like a switch, right? They, they switch points. He's still in a good position. And that's where I think as the game continues to go on, it gets harder and harder for Rasmus because he has to, you know, he has to make a pretty big comeback in terms of points with only one-point sectors. Yep, and he still needs to deal with all the you know, Leopard Tree 5 and Tree 4 tanks, which his tanks are alright, his ATGMs on the BMP 3s are alright, but they're not right. anti Leopard Tree 5. You need, like, an SU 27M, but that guy is now gone. Yeah, we see these Faust Ring and Dying push up right here. 2A5 also engaging, training shots with the B1. B1's immediately down to 1 HP. 2A5 does get hit a little bit, but it's still functional. Look for a Faust Ring and Dying to see if he can get a shot here with his Panzer Faust 3. No, he's going to go ahead and uh, yeah, get ganged up on right there. Stun City. Yeah, that was definitely Stun City. But the 2A4s are coming out, plus there's still some more Faustrum Eager. The, the mix 29 m looking for the 2A5 here. Now, that could be big. Oh, but it goes down. Oh. Critted by the Kratal right there. And it might get the 2A5. Oh, it barely oh. just doesn't kill it. was still on 2 HP. Yo, he just needs to push off his armor and try to finish it off. I think at that range, run good hit, run knock him out. Yeah, but he's going to run right in these 2A4s. Those 2A4s are coming up, and while they're not quite full health, they're pretty close. Panzer Faust uh, opening up here in the middle of the but it's going to cause him to get spotted here by this BMP3 T72 blob. And we'll see here. These 2A4s about to poke out. This could be a pretty big engagement here, I think, moving forward. Let's see. The 2A4s are about to... So you spot two first. 2A4s so get the kill in the T-72. That was big. The MP3's trying to... Yeah, they're trying to open up here. But they're going to have a hard time piercing that frontal armor, the 2A4. Yep. Both those go down here. I think this pushes over. Yep. The BMP just got blapped. Yeah. 2 a 4 is coming in. Just clutch. Oh, and yep. yep and there goes the other T-72. And yep. And GG's called. Um. What a match. I mean, Raz played a meme deck. He definitely going to have a hard time. But he did pull some punches. Yeah, no, he definitely did play a meme deck with the USSR mechanized. I, I really don't, outside of just funsies or maybe there's rules of the tournament, you know, that I don't know. Uh, so I'll just kind of default to white, you know, to his pick. He, he played a good game, but the deck definitely has severe limitations. And Greyhound's opening was just so much better. 
It, you know, a really good opening. He kept the strategic pieces alive. And even though losing some of the AA, losing the Raphael, that stuff kind of sucks um, for sure. But the MiG-29Ms never got a kill. They did a lot of damage, but they never been able to put away any of those heavy tanks, allowing them to, you know, be get re repaired back into the front there, as we saw. They proved decisive in the last armor engagement and just never quite able to, you know, string together enough small wins to kind of snowball. Yeah, and also just uh, for Greyhound, having a few motorized units, especially at the start, Legion 90 getting into that town. I mean, that Delta Town is really all about just having a few motorized guys rush on in to, right. you know, first, you know, first, first man in, all of that <laughs> stuff. But, no, absolutely. Um, with Mechanized, you're just too slow for that. Yeah, you're too slow, and then it's just not a good mechanized deck, I don't think. Like, at the end of the day, it's just, like you said, the BMP3 is cool, but what's that really bringing you? At the end of the day, we saw they really didn't do a lot. It's just hard to really make them, especially in a 1v1, it's hard to get their value. I mean, the BMPT did more than any of the BMP3s did. Yeah, I think Raz sort of just spammed more Heinz. They worked pretty well. Yeah, that might work. That might have worked better. Yeah, just, yeah. just gone all in. He should have gone USSR Airborne. He should have and just opened up with a tactical outplay, just like in yes. ranked. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, good match overall. Uh, once again, Graham, thank you very much for joining. Yes, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. As usual, please just take it easy.